All right, so here's a very important Supreme Court ruling. This is Mosley uh, versus Victoria's Secret Catalog. This is from 2003. This is a Supreme Court decision. Now, um, Victor Mosley and his wife, now you got to see the image just to put this in context, uh, owned a lingerie slash adult store in West Virginia. Now, just put all that together in your head. I don't know if any of y'all been to Virginia, West Virginia, yo. It, it's different, let's just say that. So imagine this lingerie shop in West Virginia owned by Victor and his wife, right? All right. Well, it was called Victor's Secret. Real original, right? <laughs> but Victor's Secret. Victoria's Secret eventually caught wind and said, yo, like, nah. Sent him a nasty letter. He changed it. Get this, got real creative with that shit. Victor's Little Secret. Well, Victoria's Secret was not fully enthralled by that. So um, they sued and ended up going to court, ended up going to the Supreme Court under the um, Federal Trademark Dilution Act, which basically said, um, you know, you have to, as a plaintiff, in the case, in this case, a plaintiff would be someone whose trademarks have been infringed upon or, or thought to have been infringed upon, which is Victoria's Secret, you must prove actual confusion of consumers. So you had to, Victoria's Secret had to do surveys, polls, focus studied groups, etc., and bring those results to court to show that um, consumers would actually go into Victor's Little Secret thinking it's a Victoria's Secret. That they were that dumb, right? That they just didn't get it, you know. And what ended up happening is they ruled in favor of Victor Mosley. Um, and because, because of this, that you had to, as a plaintiff, prove actual harm. You had to prove actual dilution. That, that, that him using Victor's little secret or Victor's secret diluted your, your trademark. It actually did. It actually took away at your mark. Okay? You had to prove actual harm. This was later revised three years after in the Trademark Dilution Revision Act, which changed the law, and it changed it so big, and you want to know this. It changed it to you have to prove only a likelihood of confusion. You have to just say this in court. You don't have to have, you know, no focus groups, surveys, none of that. You just have to say, hey, Consumers would probably be just maybe confused by this. This was likely pushed through by a bunch of major corporations that pushed for, because they would lose a lot of control if you had to show that people, that their consumers were actually as dumb to be, to be confused by the, by the appropriation. So the significance of the, the uh, Victor Mosley versus Victoria's Secrets case is that, yeah, you had to prove actual harm, but it also changed um, how the law was written. So Congress was lobbied heavily by companies to change the law to the Trademark Dilution Revision Act, which said you have to only prove uh, a likelihood of confusion. So in this case, is this blurring or tarnishing? Well, Victor, although you know, although, you know, he, he did win, um, you know, this would likely be an instance of blurring, right? He's using Victor's secret um, based upon the famousness of Victoria's secret, okay? Is this a fair use? No. <laughs> it's not commentary or criticism. The, mar the market's, you know, exactly, um, exact, exactly the same. It doesn't matter, though. Fair use doesn't really matter here. It's the fact, it's the fact that, you know, um, would consumers actually be confused? And, the, and they, Victoria's Secret couldn't prove that, and then they changed the law. So you can look at the slide that talks about the, fe the Federal Trademark Dilution Act, right, where owners of famous marks had to prove actual dilution, okay? Um, you know, um, and then it changed in the Dil Dilution Revision Act to show an, a likelihood of dilution or a likelihood of harm. This was likely the outcome of the Victoria, Victor, Victor's little secret case. Um, yo, Fox News owns fair and balanced. Just think about that. Just think about it. I'm gonna have a sip of my coffee. Think about that.
Think about it a little bit. No, no. Um, anyways, um, and then <laughs> you know, one of our least favorite uh, you know politicians, Al Franken. Um, you know, had a book and it was called uh, Lies and the Lying Liars Who Tell Them, A Fair and Balanced Look at the Right. Uh, he was sued by Fox. This was ultimately a criticism of Fox News and other, you know, right-leaning conservative news, organ news organizations. And, I, and, you know, political biases aside, they're all news organizations, right? Um, um, and this ended up going to court, you know, like Al Franken had a team that thought his use was justified parody, that it was free speech, um, that it was commentary and criticism of Fox, that no, there would be no consumer confusion. And Judge Chin agreed. It's ironic that a media company that should seek to protect the First Amendment is instead seeking to undermine it. Oh, snap. Okay, uh, they ruled in favor of Franken, right? Is it a fair use? Yes, right? Like, for purpose, it's commentary, it's criticism. Is fair and balanced creative? I guess. It's using its arbitrary mark, I guess, you know, using fair and balanced in a, a news organization. Um, he used the whole of it, but no way consumers would, would buy the book thinking that Fox News put it out. Okay. All right, so let's take a break. We'll chill out for a second, and then we'll talk about Nike a little bit, all right?